Let's say you just got yourself a rather powerful single board computer, like this Latte Panda, which you hook up to a portable LCD screen. With this setup you can run Windows 10 easily and thus use this operating system to play some games. Now of course you could hook up an ordinary gaming controller to the system and play like that. But if you later want to convert this setup into a Nintendo Switch-like hardware configuration, you got yourself a problem, since you would require controller inputs on the left and right sides, and thus you would need to cut your game controller in half. One solution to this problem is to place a microcontroller in the middle and then simply connect all buttons and triggers to it from the left and right sides. Sadly though, the microcontroller of my trusty Arduino Nano does not feature a USB interface and thus cannot be easily utilized as a game controller. But luckily, tons of my viewers advised me to have a look at the Teensy development boards, which I did on their website. The one which interested me the most was the Teensy LC, not only because it features a native USB connection, but also because it is the cheapest Teensy for only $11.65, which is of course not as cheap as an Arduino Nano, which you can get for $3, but its long feature list should make up for it, right? So in this video, let's find out how easy it is to program and what advantages it offers in comparison to the Arduino Nano. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, where you can order PCBs with any color you like without paying any additional fees. So feel free to upload your Gerber files and order your PCBs for only $2. When I ordered my Teensy LC board, I did not only receive the development board, which was surprisingly even smaller than an Arduino Nano, but also this welcoming piece of paper. It not only tells us which pin serves which function and also which command is necessary to use them, but also that we should visit this URL to get started. So I did just that and what I found was a well explained beginner's guide. And after reading through all kinds of tutorials for this board, I have to say that it is truly an easy to use microcontroller development board. And if you still got questions after going through all the given tutorials, you can always ask in the Teensy forum. But anyway, let's start off by downloading the Teensy Duino application and installing it along with all the ported libraries. I especially like that they got the LCD, OLED and fast LED library. And in addition with the other included libraries, you can already build a ton of projects. And as soon as the installation was complete, we can open the already installed Arduino IDE, to which now the Teensy boards as well as the ported Teensy libraries got added. At this point I connected the Teensy LC through a mic USB cable to my computer and started writing a simple blink LED sketch, which as you can see uses the same commands as you would use them for an Arduino board. Once I was happy with it, I chose the Teensy LC board but left all the other settings at their standard values and continued by verifying the sketch, which after compiling successfully automatically opens the Teensy loader. It told me to push the button on the board to manually enter the programming modes, which I could have done but instead I simply clicked upload in the Arduino IDE and thus it entered the programming mode automatically. And as you can see our blink sketch works beautifully. Next I started the serial communication and used it to output the input state of pin 2, which after uploading, connecting a wire to it and alternating it between the ground and 33 volt potential, outputs its state over the serial monitor of the Arduino IDE. Perfect. But make sure to not use 5V as an input, 
since the Teensy LC does not come with 5V tolerant inputs. It is also noteworthy that all pins of the Teensy feature pull-up resistors, just like the Arduino Nano. And speaking of similarities, you can pretty much use all the available commands of the Arduino IDE directly for the Teensy, which makes it super easy to use. But let's continue nevertheless with the tests, by creating a simple PWM signal with a duty cycle of 50% at pin 3. As you can see, after hooking the pin up to the oscilloscope, we got our intended duty cycle of around 50%, but sadly only with a frequency of 488.3 Hz. The timer responsible for the signal is the FTM2, which offers a maximum resolution of 16 bits, and with a clock frequency of 48 MHz, we should definitely be able to get better results than this. The solution is to use the analog write resolution and analog write frequency function. As an example, I set the resolution to 12 bits and the frequency to 10 kHz and slowly increase the duty cycle, which now goes from 0 to 4095 due to the higher 12 bit resolution. As you can see on the oscilloscope, the change settings of the timer apparently increased the resolution as well as the frequency successfully. But of course, you cannot use a high resolution in combination with a high frequency. But if you want more information on that, then have a look at the linked Teensy documentation in the video description. The last analog write test I did was by creating a function that outputs sine wave values with a 12-bit resolution on pin 26. Now with a normal PWM pin, the output signal would look like this, with a varying duty cycle. But the pin 26 outputs this, a beautiful 12-bit sine wave. The reason is that the Teensy LC features a DAC, or Digital to Analog Converter which is very useful for many projects. But moving on. Next, I hooked up a potentiometer to 3.3 volts on one side and ground on the other side, while I connected the middle pin to an analog input. By once again using pretty standard Arduino functions, I was able to output the changing voltage at the analog pin through the serial monitor. But once again, this was only a 10-bit value even though the ADC, or Analog to Digital Converter, supports up to 16 bits. The solution was to once again alter the resolution with the Analog read -res function, which worked like a charm. Next, I set up an interrupt on pin 2 of the Teensy, which activates when the pin gets pulled to ground, and all it does while doing so is outputting the word triggered over the serial monitor. After uploading, you can see that by connecting the pin to ground, the function gets executed successfully. And best of all, you can attach an interrupt to pretty much all pins of the Teensy. Last but not least, I wanted to create a precisely timed event, like I sometimes do in my Arduino projects, by utilizing the timer registers of the Atmega 328P microcontroller. Of course, for the Teensy, we could use those registers as well, but to keep it simple and beginners friendly, we can also use the Metro library to, for example, turn an LED on for one second and then turn it off for precisely 250 milliseconds. As you can see after uploading, the LED does just that. But of course, you could use the provided timer libraries of the Teensy to even execute timer interrupts easily. At this point, we could go on by having a look at every single library for the Teensy, or play around with the touch functionalities of the board. But that is not really necessary, because you should already understand that the Teensy boards are the easiest to use Arduino alternative I ever came across. And the fact that they are also quite powerful, which you can see in this chart, makes those boards even more appealing. So to end this video, let's get back to the game controller problem, 
by adding two buttons and a joystick to the Teensier digital pins and analog inputs. By utilizing the joystick commands of the board, I assigned the x-axis to the analog stick and a button number to each digital input. Afterwards, I simply selected the USB type as a joystick and uploaded the codes. And just like that, my Teensy board got recognized as a game controller. Which means I can get back to working on my project and you know that the Teensy is an awesome development platform. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.